So let's look at the comparison with the linear system case. All right. So remember, we had a single input system that we are working with, and a single output system, single input and single output. So let's look at a linear single input, single output system. So can be represented by a transfer function, right? Uh, and it has a standard canonical state space realization also. All of you are aware of this, I hope. Yeah. From this transfer function, I can get to this state space realization, right? So basically, these two are equivalent. So uh, this is the A matrix. This is the B matrix. This is the C matrix. B is the control matrix. A is the was the drift, and C is the output. Okay. From this transfer function, this is what will be your minimal realization yeah, standard. Okay. Uh, why did I move to the A B Cs? Because of course I want to work in state space, right? Not in frequency domain. So with this uh, setup. You can see that the entire system is linear, so there is no partial linearization and all going on here. We are just trying to see what happens. So if you look at Z1, Z1 is y equal to this entire thing, right? So I expanded it, right? It's uh, x1, x2, all the way to x my x n minus r plus one, yeah. So I'm just how do you get the output? Output is just this multiplied by x, the states, right? So that's how I get the output. Okay. Z2 is obviously y1 dot. Just how it's been defined, right? So, uh, or, or sorry, z1 dot. If you want to write, sorry, z2 is z1 dot because it's y dot, and you can expand it, but it's not relevant. Basically, you have all the way going from z1 to z2. Uh, wait a second. Yeah. So z1 dot is z2, z2 dot is z3, z r minus one dot is z r. So that's the first. Whatever the first r minus one columns covered, hmm? okay. That is this guy. I see. So this this is only using n minus r, and this is of course n dimensional. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's just how the transfer function is. Huh? No, it's very deliberately done. Huh? The numerator is deliberately has power only to n minus r, just so that you have zeros in the end. It's not. It's not making use of all the states. Okay, but this is obvious just because of this dynamics. If you write this as x dot is a x plus b u, if I write it like this, or actually in this case the way it's been written is uh, not x dot, but it's written as z dot is a z plus b u. Hmm? We're using z, not x. Hmm? So if you just write this out. Z dot is A Z plus B U. You will get this, right? Z one dot is Z two. You will get this part. Right? It's pretty obvious, right? The only thing left is the last one. Okay. Uh, actually, not the last one. Not not even the last one. I apologize. Not even the last one. Uh, I'm just trying to see what's happening. So Z one dot is Z. And z r minus one dot is z r. That's obvious. Uh, and what are we doing? We are writing z r as this guy. I see. What's the need to do this? Why am I doing this? Um, all right. Sorry, I'm going to move forward. Uh, yeah, this is. I'm just going to move forward, huh? and I'll come back to it if we need it. Yeah, this much is obvious from the dynamics. Z dot is a z plus b u, right? In fact, the u appears only in the z n dot. Yeah, we are only going from one to r minus one here. Okay, then we want to look at z r dot. Okay, that's that's where all this. Is happening, okay? What is Z R dot now? Hmm? What is Z R dot? From this expression itself, you will see that Z R dot is simply equal to Z 
r plus 1 because I have not reached n ok I hope that is evident ok yeah I have not reached n the r and the n are different ok so and r is obviously less than n so zr is somewhere here so so just by this dynamics itself yeah zr minus 1 dot is zr similarly zr dot is zr plus 1 ok now I am just wondering how we get to this form ok with the control that is all uh, how does zr dot contain the control I guess I have no choice but to actually look at this huh, disappointing alright we have to look at it this way there is no choice ok if you look at z1 it is y which is exactly this guy which is expanded here ok z2 is z1 dot I am actually taking the derivatives here so x1 dot gives me x2 x2 dot gives me x3 xn minus r dot gives me xn minus r plus 1 and xn minus r plus 1 gives me xn minus r plus 2 ok I have no choice but to do this yeah and you keep doing this onwards and onwards if you zr is actually equal to zr minus 1 dot right which gives me what you can keep continuing the same logic x2 will go if you notice in 2 there is 2 here right so I will get the r index here similarly the r plus 1 index here yeah so you just add basically uh, r to it so you will get n minus r plus 1 will give change to n minus r sorry n minus 1 and this will become n ok is that clear basically I am not doing this is nothing no magic here yeah it is very huh? yeah let us not use that forget that I mean it is but it is useless I mean uh, because because zr plus 1 is coming from zr so see how zr plus 1 is not actually in, this is not true this is not true I should erase this actually this is not what we do we do not define zr plus 1 as zr dot yeah that is not correct ok so uh, because we define new coordinates the phi coordinates yeah these are only the linear coordinates we, as of now we are only looking at the linear coordinates so how we are getting to the dynamics of the linear coordinates is simply by taking consecutive derivatives of y just like we have been doing ok and if you keep taking the consecutive derivatives of y this is what you will get yeah you go to b0x2 b1x3 and so on and then if you keep moving forward and all the way to zr which is zr minus 1 dot you will just match the indices here 2 becomes 2 3 becomes r plus 1 and so on and so forth yeah basically all you are doing is uh, you know you are basically just moving from the 2th index to the rth index that is it you can see the pattern here it is nothing complicated and then the only important thing to remember here is this brings in xn that is it see these last terms did not mean anything earlier but now you have an xn why because xn dot contains the control this is what is important ok so when I take zr dot which is the derivative of this guy these things won't do anything this will give me r plus 1 r plus 2 n but xn dot will bring in the control as it should why because it is a relative degree r system yeah ok or if it was not evident to you earlier just by the fact that you go only till n minus r here in the numerator makes it a relative degree r system ok for the linear case so this is actually a relative degree r system even if it was not evident to you earlier by taking these derivatives it becomes evident to you right because the control appears only in the rth derivative so obviously it has to be a relative degree r system yeah so that is it I have a relative degree r system this is my linear dynamics z1 dot is z2 z2 dot is z3 all the way and then zr dot contains the control ok that is what is written here that is it some r and s matrices we need not concern ourselves with it but there is the control here now how do we choose the rest of the coordinates well the way it is been chosen here in these nodes is just take them to be the first r, n minus r states right because I already had z1 to zr so now I need n minus r more states 
so i'm just taking them as the first n minus r states okay it turns out to work fine so here it says you have to find the rank of the jacobian yeah i can even put this as an exercise yeah it's pretty easy to check yeah uh, because the first uh, because the rest of the states are these z1 to zr and this is the x1 to xn minus r yeah if you verify the jacobian will turn out to be full rank all right uh, now so now what uh, so this is what is the additional dynamics correct this is what will give me the zero dynamics all right and this is what is the etas right so the z1 to zr form the size so the etas are these guys okay so what is the derivative of the etas x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is x3 xn minus r dot is xn minus r plus 1 okay all right so if you want to write them in terms of the eta and psi x1 dot is x2 so this is eta 2 x2 dot is x3 eta 3 this is how i have actually constructed the etas and this guy yeah then you go all the way to eta n minus r and this guy xn minus r plus 1 okay what is xn minus r plus 1 it is not any eta i hope that's evident right because eta goes only to xn minus r right it's not eta so how do i write it i just go back to this equation right look at this yeah you can see xn minus r plus 1 appearing here all right so i'm only trying to write everything in terms of the new variables that's all i'm not doing any magic here i'm just trying to write everything in terms of the new variables okay so i know that x1 to xn minus r are my eta1 to eta n minus r and then i have z1 to zr so all i want to do is write my zero dynamics in terms of these eta and z so eta and whatever z1 to zr eta and z1 to zr all right now my problem is when I took the eta dot, the last term came out to be x x minus x n minus r plus one, which is not eta, and it is not directly any z one to z r either. Okay, so but it's pretty simple. I just I can see that my output z one contains the x n minus r plus one, right? So I can write this as z one minus b zero eta one b one eta two b n minus r minus one eta n minus r right so i can directly write this in terms of z 1 and etas right just by using the output equation yeah so that's what i have it is psi 1 which is z 1 minus this entire all right okay that's what i have written yeah you have a peak psi and a q eta and q is basically this coming from here peak psi plus q eta and the q comes from this guy right and so if psi is 0 your 0 dynamics is just this much which is this yeah okay clear and so what is this if you look at this equation this is first of all what r dimensional sorry n minus r sorry keep reminding me yeah, okay so this is n minus r dimensional system so this is also obviously n minus r yeah but if you look at the structure of this what are the poles of this system what are the poles they are basically sorry not the poles but the coefficients of the transfer function are this right of this right all right okay but uh, so if you want to find the eigenvalues what you have to do you have to basically find the zeros of the characteristic equation which is being going to be defined by this guy just this guy right so basically the eigenvalues of this system are the zeros of the trans original transfer function right what was my original transfer function was just this right right so zeros of this guy is actually equal to eigenvalues of my zero dynamics 
okay zeros of the original transfer function are the eigen values of the zero dynamics right so that's what you have q is this eigen values of this is exactly defined by zeros of that transfer function because if you write the characteristic equation of this matrix q you will get exactly these as coefficients right all right so what have what do you have the zero dynamics the name has a very clear connotation okay it is coming from the linear system context yeah that it is the zeros of this transfer function is what is giving you the zero dynamics okay so pretty interesting actually right so uh, depending on how this guy looks if you are looking at a linear system depending on how this guy looks to you you know that what is the first of all you will know what is the relative degree of the system right in this case uh, what was the relative degree of the system r which was n minus the highest power of this yeah relative degree is just n minus the highest power why because i will keep taking successive derivatives right that's what i did and i will get to the nth power after r minus 1 steps and then if i take one more i get the control right so relative degree is defined immediately by looking at this and the zeros of this guy yeah or the solution of this the solution of this gives you the eigen values of the zero dynamics yeah so if the if this is a stable system this represents a stable system okay then so if this equal to zero gives me all real negative real parts negative for the corresponding s then i'm good right basically gives me uh, that my zero dynamics is stable right and that in frequency domain context what is this called when the zeros are on the left half plane minimum phase exactly minimum phase okay so and that's the nice property that we are extending to non linear systems right so this is a minimum phase system so zero dynamics having stable a stable zero dynamics is equivalent to having minimum phase in the linear system case okay so in this case if you have a minimum phase system your q will have negative real eigen values or whatever will have eigen values with negative real parts okay which is a exponentially stable system and that's what you want remember yeah i hope you remember because we can't do anything with the non linear piece so if you have negative real, uh, real uh, eigen values with negative real parts for that amazing right so it's it's going to zero exponentially fast right in this linear system context also i cannot have played with the eta dynamics done anything to the eta dynamics right but because it turned out that this has good structure yeah i can now only work with the z dynamics yeah all right okay okay great so we don't have to talk about this uh right so that's the idea okay in order to get asymptotic stability for the entire non linear system which has been partially linearized all right you need the non linear part the z or the zero dynamics to have nice features which is stability the zero dynamic should be stable all right that's really the idea and that's what we are sort of trying to state here all right and what does it say it says that if you have uh, if you without loss of generality if you assume that this is an equilibrium of the system psi and eta equal to 0 0 that is in the z states okay and it has relative degree r okay uh, then if the zero dynamics is locally asymptotically stable okay suppose that the equilibrium eta equal to 0 of the zero dynamics is locally asymptotically stable or you also say use these words the system is minimum phase yeah and the feedback linearized subsystem is also asymptotically stable right so what are we saying the linear part is asymptotically stable or stabilized by the control that you have okay and on top of that the non linear part that is the zero dynamics of the non linear part 
is also asymptotically stable then the combination is asymptotically stable okay this is basically the cascade idea because your system looks like this you have a linear part yeah just by virtue of your control you have a linear part yeah and you assume that this is exponentially stable in fact this is exponentially stable right and then you have a non linear part right you have a non linear part which I know is locally asymptotically stable when the linear part is 0. This is the 0 dynamics, right? 0 dynamics is this guy. And I am saying that this is locally asymptotically stable. So, the combination is in fact asymptotically stable. That is the claim. Okay. Any questions? Hmm. Yeah. How the Q? How to write the Q? Okay. That's fine. That's fine. So we are writing this equation, by the way, huh? not this. We are actually writing this equation. I hope you got that eta is this x1, x2, all the way to xn minus r. Now all I'm trying to do is because this is the eta dynamics, right? So I'm just trying to write eta dot from here. So, eta dot is x1 dot is x2. So, eta 1 dot is eta 2 and so on. So, x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is x3. That's what I have written. x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is x3, xn minus r dot is xn minus r plus 1. All right. Then, x2 is actually eta 2, x3 is eta 3 and so on and so forth. Then, I will get eta n minus, eta n minus r. We have not, if you see here, we have defined it. Yeah, and that r plus 1 to zn is defined as this guy. See, eta, eta and psi are just the split of the z vector. That is all. I mean, I know I am introducing not of new notation, but the way we have been working is we move from the x variables, right? From the x variables, we move to the z variables and all I am doing is splitting this z into psi and eta because this is the linear, yeah, I want a linear piece and then this is the non-linear piece. That is all. That is what I am repeating here also, yeah. So, psi is basically the first few vectors of z which was the linear part already done and then this is the non-linear part which I am defining these coordinates I have to define these are the phi's phi i's these I have to define these I am defining at these vectors these variables from the original state yeah these I have to right. So now eta 2 is e, sorry x 2 is eta 2 x 3 is eta 3 yeah then I go all the way to eta n minus r but then x n minus r plus 1 is not in eta yeah to do so to write x n minus r plus 1 I go back to my output equation. Right here, I have from this guy. I can write x n minus r plus one as z one minus b zero x one minus b one x two all the way to minus b n minus one x n minus r. And I know that this is eta one, this is eta two, this is eta n minus r. Right, and this is z one. So if you look at this, z one is basically coming from the linear part from the psi. So I have a psi term, and then z r plus one to z n coming in the eta term. This I have just written as this guy, right? Q eta. That is the Q because I do not care about this because I am going to make this 0. So, I just write the Q from here, uh, actually here. Yeah, I skip the psi part, that is all. That is how I get the Q. This is just 0, if you look at this 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, all the way to you know there will be a 0, 0, all the way there will be a 1 in the end. And then I will get this guy. Yeah? Alright. 